Hey everybody, how the heck are you? I'm Thastidious and I am exhausted. We just finished a 3 hours and 40 something minute stream where we pulled 532 ancient shards for me and of course many, many, many viewers. By the way, it's day 52 in the free to play series. We went 517 straight ancient shards without pulling a legendary champion. The chances of this were less than 0.5%. The chances of this were less than pulling one legendary from one ancient shard during a non-2x. However, I have my shard pulls for you. I pulled 31 shards on the YT account. I did that with my girlfriend, Johanna. You will see all that. And then we'll do all the normal account stuff, you know? So we'll get into that. But for now, let's hop on in. Fastidious. Fastidious. Here we go, guys. Day 52 in the free-to-play series. Day 52 of the channel. And I really hope, I think, and I really hope, this will go down as the weirdest, most unlucky, most unfortunate day in the history of the channel. Why do I say that? We just wrapped up a stream where I pulled 517 straight ancient shards to begin with zero legendary champions. We got zero. Bubkiss. What are the chances of that? Is that the most unlucky streak ever during a 2x ancient event? Well, I want to know. So let's do a little streamception here. Let me turn it on display mode. Let's go onto this website, the Raid Summoning Simulator. It's a really cool thing. It simulates the chances of different things happening and different scenarios occurring. And yeah, you get a little percentage chance. What was the chance of that scenario occurring? The scenario in question, 517 straight ancient shards, zero legendaries. So let's plug in our info, our parameters. Is it a double event? Yes, it's double ancient shards. No 10X champions. Sorry, I didn't mean to click that. Uh, shards to pull, ancient shards. Number of shards, 517. We'll do 10,000 iterations. Simulate it and get the average. What are the chances of this happening? So here's our first little bell curve for legendaries, epics, and rares. But I want to go all the way down here, where we actually get the numbers spit out. What was the chance of pulling zero legendary champions? Zero. 0.44%. 44 in 10,000. That was the chance of this occurring. I think a lot of us know the chance of pulling one legendary champion out of one ancient shard during a non-2x is 0.5% chance. So what occurred was more unlucky than just doing a, a YOLO single pull of an ancient shard and getting a legendary champion. This is insane. Gets even crazier. If we go down here, the chance of pulling here, I'll just highlight this so you can see, 0.44%, right? Zero legendary champions. That's what happened. If we go down here and we highlight this, what's the chance of us pulling 11 legendary champions? 0.96%. So it was over double as likely that we could have pulled 11 legendary champions. And that is almost exactly in line with the chance of pulling 12. That's 0.4%. We were up 0.44%. This was insanity. This was crazy. The chance of this happening was nuts. However, you guys are probably really keen to see what happened on this specific account. How did my pulls go? We pulled 31 ancient shards, so it was a lot. Most we've ever pulled in one sitting on this account. Let's see how we did. All right, we got 28 actually, so I miscounted. 28 shards, we're going in. We're going in, we're gonna start with the 10 pull. We're gonna do it. This doesn't count towards the summon off, and then we're gonna do one by one, switching off. <laughs> okay. You favored me. <laughs> Okay, okay, we're going every other one. I'll, uh, Johanna will start. Okay, come on, guys. Come on, guys. At least we got two epics. Okay, start with a bluesy. Valerie, good, good rare. Farmable, though. Another one. And another one. Guys, that was 13 shards, so we're officially <laughs> over. Careful, we're officially at uh, over 500 shards. We're at 502 shards now. I'm gonna do a big toe reveal. Oh my god! I can't, deal with this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this, guys. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with it. This is actually insane. 
Okay, an epic at least. Oh my god. I don't care. I don't care. I don't okay, care. Fine. Whatever. Uh-oh. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah, the title of the video should be I'm crying on stream. <laughs> I don't even want to look anymore. I just know it's gonna be blue. Rosin rare. <laughs> uh -oh. Wow. I'm also gonna lose this, maybe. I, I, yeah, need the, I need this one. I'm winning by one, so she needs a legendary. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. I won't. I don't blame you, Quiggies, if, if you don't want us to pull. Wow. This is a broken man, right here. Here we go. Three ancient shards. Just give me an epic. Come on. It's the best day of your life. Nice. I'll do the last one. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. Okay. Husk, not bad. All right, we got the points. I was I was almost gonna prank him and say and say it was gold, but I thought that would be too mean, right? Well, there you have it, guys. We pulled 31 and we got four epics. So did it go great? No. Did it go bad? No, not at all. That's a thousand champ chase points just from the epics. So let's look at what we got really quick. A lot of food champions. I will shout out one rare champion. Where is she hiding? Magus. This is our one brand new uh, rosin rare champion, rosin fusion champion that we pulled from that. So that's pretty cool. If we go up to the epics though, we got these four right here. Let's take a look at them. So Maeve, she's one of those three barbarian epic sisters that all are the same skin. Why is it so hard for me to find this? Um, she's fine. I don't like her at all. Um, definitely one of, one of the worst epics. Probably not the very, very, very bottom tier, but she's there. Um, then we've got Crypt Witch, maybe one of the very, very worst epics. She's terrible. However, the other two are quite good. Husk, he's cool. He's much, much more late game viable, so he's gonna sit in the vault for a while. Maybe eventually we'll build him out. But if we looky here, he's got this move, Burning Iron. If you book him out, and he probably would be worth books if you had them to spare, you get a 40% chance of placing a Provoke on the, on the A1. So kind of like Seeker, a little less likely. Um, then here, this is the really cool move. This is an AoE move. If you book it out, you have got a 60% chance of placing an AoE stun, damage inflicted, proportional enemy at max HP. That's what you love to see. That's what Royal Guard has, what Septimus has, what Coltart has. So this move can smack. The multipliers aren't as high as like a Royal Guard, but it can still hit really hard. And he's Force Affinity, which is actually really great for helping you clear those waves in the Dragon. However, this takes a lot of good gear. He's not as easy to build as a Royal Guard. HP based champion. Um, he's pretty cool. And then the last move, single hitter. This can also hit really hard. Books down to a 3 turn cooldown. I mean, this is a uh, this damage increases according to this champion's current HP. So you want this guy to not really lose each HP much. You don't want him to get targeted. Um, you want him to keep that HP high and have that move smack. The other good one is a Colt Brawler. He probably would be more immediately relevant to this account. Um, he's pretty cool because he doesn't need uh, books really at all, which is nice. Um, however, we already have Frozen Banshee, and even though he's an amazing poisoner, and some might argue he's better than Frozen Banshee, he doesn't work at all with the way we've been building our clan boss team. Our clan boss team is super, super magic heavy, and then with a couple force champions we might put in and out. Having a spirit champion, while the versatility could be better later on in the game, we don't have the gear for that, we don't have the resources for that, so it doesn't make sense. But I'll show you the kit so, so quickly. The A1's pretty cool. When booked out, you get a 60% chance of placing a big version 5% poison buff for two turns. The A2 is really weird. You guys can go in the index and read it yourself. It's all these conditional things. You know, if the campaign's under one or more debuffs, two or more debuffs, three, four, so on and so on. The reason that's interesting though, is because if you look here at the passive, let's look at it when it's ascended, ascension level three, it places a 2.5% poison debuff on this champion for four turns at the start of each turn. So you can let these poison stack and stack and stack, 
Um, and then he'll use this Curse Eater. If there are four or more debuffs, you'll heal this champion by 30% of the damage inflicted. If there are five or more, you'll get the extra turn and it'll cleanse all the all the debuffs. I actually think this attack always cleanses all the debuffs, if I'm not mistaken. It eats the curse, it eats the poison. Um, so it's pretty cool. And then this also has a 70% chance of placing a big version poison on a random enemy for four turns at the start of each turn. Four turns is pretty crazy. So every time, uh, beginning of each turn, a random enemy, if you, he's great just for clan boss. In clan boss, that's the only random enemy. So this can get, stack a lot of poisons. And this is pretty cool because also doesn't hit. So this is why he could be viable. If he was defense based, I'd be way more keen to build him so he could have tankiness even against like the magic affinity clan boss. He's not bad. If you get him, you should build him. Um, he just can't be a priority right now. So in the vault, they all go. In the vault, they all go. However, guys, now that we've looked at those champions, how will we get some new ones? Let's make sure we have space. Am I going to pull more? Absolutely no. However, we've been waiting, waiting, waiting to fuse all these champions. Let's do it. I want more champ chase points. We did pretty good. I mean, we pulled rares, so we got points for those. Um, and then we, of course, pulled the four epics, four non-void epics. That's 250 points apiece. That's 1,000 champ chase points. But we definitely need more. We need to get to 2,500. So it's Relic, Keep Relic Keeper time. Relic Keeper is going to be really cool, too, because he's the last Arbiter mission on the current page we're on. So when we get there, it will already be done. This used to I not used to not work retroactively, I think, but they changed it over the summer. Pretty great. 300,000 silver, that's always annoying, but I will happily take the 250 champ chase points we're about to get. Let's see it pop up. There we go, nice. It always makes me nervous when it doesn't pop up right away. We have another one though that I've already completed. Um, it is for, who is it for? Eren Yes. So we got all these champions rocking and rolling. Um, I don't know what, oh, what gear I have on her. I cannot imagine it's that good. I'm happy to sacrifice it. I don't want to lose the cash. I probably geared her way, way long ago to just progress a little bit. Get out of the way. Progress a little bit in, um, ooh, more gear here. Again, this is probably really early on gear. I just put in, to have these champions because I knew I was going to fully send them new. I'd bring them to 40, so let them help out a bit in Faction Wars. And then Wander, he's not going to have any gear on him. Cool. I also want to just quickly see, we did pull a dupe Valerie, and she is someone who I'm almost certainly going to build. She'd be really, really cool for Faction Wars, for, um, Excuse me, for Banner Lords, that's what she is. She's also can be really helpful in, um, excuse me, what's his name? The Scarab King. She has a debuff extender, which can help with your shields, and she puts out shields herself. On my main account, before I had better shield champions, I ran her in a shield set that worked out pretty well. And then also, she has the shields, right? She has her own shield. She has a deep, uh, not debuff, I said that before, a buff extension on your whole team, AoE by a turn. She could pair well on a free to play comp. She could pair really well with Brogni. Get her shields beefier, extend his shields, all that good stuff, extend his increased attack, all that nice stuff. However, we'll keep that dupe for now. Let's let's fuse Aaron. Yes, let's get another 250 points. That's 500 points. So just from Epics, the two we fused and the four we pulled today, we're at 1,500 points. We're just a thousand away. You know we're not done though. I finally got all the fragments for these two. These are void champions, void rares. That's 50 points apiece. It's gonna be another hundred points. So from our, our fusions and the epics we've got, we're going to be at 1,600 points. That's actually a really comfy spot to be in. Um, so let's keep going here. And you know we're not done also. We're done for the video, but you know I'm not done for the weekend because why did I want Bloodhorn? Why did I want, um, what's her name, Huntress? H Huntress? Huntress, that's how you say her name. Huntress. Um, well, I wanted them, so now we have all the champions we need for Broadma. So, of course, we already fused Arbalester a while ago and Stoneskin. They're, they're uh, leveled up to 30 and they're ranked out. This is a really fun fusion because you don't have to you don't have to rank them higher uh, to rank four or something. You just bring them up to the their base rank is ranked three stars, right? Because they're rare champions, you just bring them to level thirty, which is pretty fast, and then you ascend them, which is really cheap because they're rare champions. Now we got these two. Of course, after this video, I'll level them up, ascend them, and then tomorrow we'll fuse Broadma. So I'll be another three fifty points. So in total, we'll have made nineteen fifty points, which is really really cool. Um, we were not super lucky, but we could it could have been way. We could have been much more unlucky. You know, we could have had more misfortune. I mean, we got four epics in 31 pulls. That's kind of right in line with the 16% rate. Maybe even slightly better. I don't know, I'd have to run it, but I don't care. Um, however, this is really nice. I will show you our performance thus far in the champ chase and what my plans are to hit exactly 2,500. I don't wanna go one over. I need as many shards, as many resources as possible for the summon rush. I legit think we might not get robbed. I'm just gonna go on the record right now. I, I'm, I'd give it an 80% chance. I'm feeling confident. I think I have a lot of stuff planned, which I'm about to tell you in a minute, that will help us make it by just the skin of our teeth, but it's gonna be a close call. Will this ever load? This stuff never loads. Let me take my screenshot. Me, honestly, the screenshots aren't even, 
I, I, it's become normalized to me. Like, I don't even realize, like, hey, how nice it would be if I didn't have to edit in a screenshot. It doesn't take that long, but it's an extra minute to two minutes every time I do a screenshot, every video, every day. It drives me nuts. Um, okay, so we got an epic book. That's what I was really looking forward to. This was at the, I don't know, 1850 threshold, and we are at 1911. So we are 589 points away. Looking pretty good. 589, though, subtract 350, and we're looking at two, what, 239? right? Because we're going to get 350 from Broadma. So 239, we're going to be farming campaign like a beast. We should get some rare farmable drops, some uncommon farmable drops. I think we might have to open very, 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 a very limited number of, uh, how do you call them? Uh, mystery shards, because I want to save every possible mystery shard for my for my summon rush, which I'm so nervous about. Let's get these Mordecai fragments. Let's actually pick up all the fragments along the way. I'm not gonna zoom in on all this stuff, guys. You're gonna have to bear with me. I was up late last night making sure I finished the Dragon Tournament. We finished it pretty exactly. Um, I finished, I'll just tell you, with 2055. I needed 2050. I'm not pushing any further than I have done these. So let's get those, uh, are those Giscard fragments? I think they are. Quick shout out for my main account. I pulled a Giscard today. I didn't have good pulls there at all. However, my one good pull was a Giscard. Um, I am going to grab this XP boost because ours just ran out, so that landed really well. So now I can fuse a Giscard on that account and also keep my dupe for myself. All right, so there we go. There's a bit more to claim because, I, of course, I did finish the Artifact Enhance event. Um, let's go in here and we'll grab these, what, 15 Fenchy uh, shards. We actually got a little lucky. You, you guys will watch the video, I'm sure. But we got a little lucky in that we at least got, for a couple different people, we got a Giscard, we got a couple Fenchies. So some, we made the fusion easier for some people, and for those that are going to be fine on it, we help them get dupes of those nice champions so they can keep a copy for themselves, just like I'm doing on my main. So I think I just picked up everything I had to. Let's go in here, the frag infusions, and see how we're doing with everything. You'll see, we've got 15 of each of these guys going pretty well. Um, the champ training, I'll just hop in there really quick to show you guys. However, in just about one second, we're going to be doing a little bit better. Um, so if we look here, I'm not going to do a zoom in. I think everyone can see it's not that bad. Uh, we get fragments from every single one here, and we got to get all the way up to 1270, uh, 12,750. It's hard, but we got a full, full week to do this. I still have over six and a half days, so that's pretty good. Um, so you only need, I think, comes out to about 1,800 points a day, give or take. 1,800 is a good number to shoot for, and you should be fine. So we're already doing pretty good. We're at 1,590. How about we get a bunch more so we can just take the the pressure off us a bit. You know I've been leveling up those four star food champs like a beast. Um, I've made the five five star chickens. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting on that with the last champ training. I didn't want to do it right away. I wanted to save all those points for when they mattered for Brogni. So now it's time to make our newest six star champion. We have six of them, time to get the seventh. The debate was between Cardinal and Frozen Banshee. I've chosen Cardinal. Frozen Banshee will only really help because we're fine in the dragon with Kale. She's only really going to help in the clan boss. Cardinal's going to help in absolutely all dungeons. And if we ever get another good nuker, excuse me, I did not mean to put anything. If we ever get an another good nuker to go with Skullcrown or maybe Skullcrown Kale and someone, we get this really, really cool arena comps with this uh, revive. But the only way that revive works is everyone dies, but she lives. She can't be tanky enough without being six stars. I think I've explained myself. Let's do it. So this is going to be 300 points right here. There we go. And of course, we can level her a bit. So guys, normally what I might do is throw a lot of voids on this. And I might make a whole separate, really short video just to drive this point home. However, I strongly recommend you do not use a single void shard that you don't have to in either the champ training event or the champ training tournament. Why is that? Well, I'll put a picture of the calendar up right now. Um, we have basically 24 hours because we get on the 29th and the fusion goes to the 30th on the 29th we get our last fragments for skimphos and he's the void champion you're gonna have 24 hours to rank him up to rank five and then level him to 50 you know and then ascend him to rank five and then to be able to finish the fusion it's gonna be really tight so save as many of these void potions as you can so you can just throw them all in him and just get him going really fast so you don't have to freak out you don't have to be stressed so i'll just level her a bit you know when we use her in dungeons i'll level her a bit in the campaign now get her to like level 30 um so she gets a bit of her base stats back pretty cool that we got her going i'm not gonna send her because i don't even have a banner for uh sacred order no real reason it's not like she needs accuracy anyway i probably just want to put resist on her so that's pretty cool Let's go here. I just want to, let's make sure there's nothing in the vault that I needed to show you. No, there's not. I want to go here, X out of this. I want to go here and show you, I still have a lot of four star food champions. I really do. And of course we got a lot of three star food from all those pulls, of course, of course. And I've been building it as well. Look at all that. So it's a lot of three star food. And then four star food wise, we're looking pretty good still. So here's three thirties that immediately I'll be able to rank up. I'm just leveling these guys up in the sparring pit. So let's count those three, four, 
Skip those. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 already. 24 Starfruit Champions. Uh, guys, if for anyone who saw that old, old video where I struggled, maybe I'll dig it up and card it. I don't know. It might be hard. But I was having trouble with math. It is tw You need 25 four star food champions to bring a character to rank six. So how does that work? Five of them will be your five five star food champions. So you bring those to level 40 and each one of those five take four four star food champions. So five times four, 20, and then the five you brought up to level 40, 25. See, I've gotten better at math. I did a much better job explaining it this time. Um, so I'm only five food champs away. That is counting these ones, which I'll have done the second I finish the video. So you just gotta bring five more of these three star guys and clearly have enough three star food. So I could even probably tomorrow make a five star food champion. I mean, make, make a six star champion, make my five five star food champions and make a six star. However, I think we're doing very well already in the champ training event. I'm gonna save that all and save everything possible for the champ training tournament. If I get in an easy enough group, I might push big. Couple, one thing I wanna talk on, touch on quickly and then I wanna talk about some scary stuff going on with the Brogni Fusion and I think a lot of us should be worried. I'm worried. I'm, I'm really worried on this account. But quickly I wanna say, I had to use what it come out to, 1170 gems. I had to go into the shop because I was like, we need to get epics. We need to get epics. You guys saw in the polls, I had to pull 31 shards. I only had 17. So we bought 14. How do we do that? Excuse me. We got the big shard pack for 900. That comes with 11. And then the small shard pack for 270. So we wasted 1170. Maybe not wasted, but you know I love to have my gems at around 1,000 minimum. This puts me in a, in a vulnerable position. However, I will say... It's always good to keep an eye on your daily log and rewards. We're getting another 150 here. We have our 500 coming up there. It's really cool. Looking really good. We also have this void chart, which is gonna be invaluable for this uh, summon, summon rush. Perfect transition. I wanna talk summon rush, summon rush. Boy, oh boy, guys. This is gonna be the end for a lot of people. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. A lot of times I'm like, guys, if you prepare, you can do it. Even if you were prepared, you might not be able to do this. I might not be able to do this. We're very, very likely, if the numbers line up, I'll put the Fusion calendar up again um, because I want to show you that for Ashkelon, Brago, and Yoshi, the numbers for the Champ Chase event were something like, I think it's 1070 for the lower one, like this one was, but for sure for the Champ Chase it was 2500 for the top reward. However, we could always skip that. You know, for Ashkelon, that was a free epic, or an extra epic so you didn't have to fuse it. That was something you could potentially skip and just go for the rares. And then for for Yoshi or Brago, there were extra fragments, so you could skip out on some fragments like we always show in this calendar. This one, you can't skip anything without winning a tournament, so you have to go over that. And if we're to think that this 2,500 of the champ chase, that's the same, if we know that's the same, as it has been the past three fusions, it's also been, maybe it's gonna be the same for the summon rush. And the top rewards, the top fragments or epic champion for that, depending on the Ashlon or Brago and Yoshi, has been 3,000 points. 3,000 summon rush points. There's no variability. It's not like, oh, maybe I'll get lucky and pull a legendary. If you pull a sacred shard during that event, whether it's a legendary or an epic, it's 500 points, which is pretty cool. But you know, with an ancient shard, it doesn't matter if you pull an epic or legendary or, an or a rare, it doesn't matter. It's only 20 points always. That stinks. So I'll just talk you through how many points do I have right now? Four voids, that's 480. Then a sacred shard, that's 500. Let me make sure my face isn't in the way. No, I'm in the other corner. That's 980. 980. And then we'll just we'll just call this 600 for my own. I'll, I'll do the math. Okay, so 980, we're talking 1580 minus 25. We're talking 1555. So I'm still, I'm barely halfway there. That's crazy how hard this is going to be. So what do I recommend you guys do? We have the champ chase going on right now. Go do everything you possibly can to not use a single mystery shard. I know mystery shards seem like nothing. Oh, let's pull 10 here, pull 10 here. Before you know it, you've pulled 200. And that's 200 points you wasted for the summon rush. What I recommend you do, go to my notes here, save your mysteries. How can you do that? Well, I'm going to the market. I saved a couple. I'm buying everything. I'm buying out all my stuff, at least till I feel comfy that I have enough stuff to level up for food. And keep in mind, you still get your tournament points for, for buying stuff. And then the shards, That's the shards are the only way you're getting points in the summer rush. So save them like, like you're crazy, you know? Go, go out of your way like you're crazy. But then even with all those mystery shards, I mean, we do have all this, sorry, you'll see this is how I level up my food to be as efficient as possible. Um, even though we'll have all these mystery shards and we will be getting a lot more from this champ training event and the champ training tournament, all the dungeon tournaments, we're getting mystery shards for all this. So it's easy to think I'll get another 500 mystery shards. I'm still gonna be a lot. I, I still would be short as that stands. I'm gonna get that void shard that I showed you in the daily log and that's 120. I'll still be short. I recommend you go, if you're, if you're not all the, all, 
If you're not already done with them, I recommend you go into your challenges and see what might be hiding out. So I think we have a really good chance to get another Void Shard and another Sacred Shard. So, how could this work? Well, these are gonna, they look hard and I haven't done any of them. They're actually pretty easy. So this one's just stage one, two, and three of Karak Castle. That's stage one of Brutal. Um, so one, 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 two, one, three. Just get a five star artifact. This could take five runs. Just take one run, take five, 10, 20. I don't think it would make, take more than 20 runs to get one five star thing. So if you did that, right, that'd be, let's say worst case, it was 60 runs, 60 times eight, it's 480 energy. It's a lot, but it's not the end of the world. Then you equip them with all these random sets. That's something I could do right now. I just, I tend to use four set pieces or, or I just, I pick stats over sets. So a lot of times I don't have these complete sets and then they need to be level 12 or higher. But then that would be a void chart. And then dungeons, I'm on the second to last page here. I think we have a good shot here too. I know for a fact I can clear void on auto. The only reason I haven't done this is since we unlocked this page, I've already been doing it on uh, stage 15 and they don't say 13 or higher, it has to be 15. Fire Knight Castle, maybe I can manual this and do it. And then that's an, a sacred shard. And then who knows what's on the next two pages. I could look it up, but maybe there'll be another chance. But right there, if I could do that, that's 620 more points, 120 for the void shard, 500 for that. That could be pretty huge. So I recommend you guys hunt high and low for any chances to get more shards. Look in, look in here, you know? Look in your missions. Could you clear a bunch of these in time? See, I don't have any. There's a, there's an ancient shard, but that's not gonna be anything great. But could you clear a bunch of those and maybe get another void shard or sacred shard? I mean, theoretically, if I did clear this, which I can't because I'm gonna get, maybe I could, it'll be tight, but I'm gated, gonna be gated by this. But if I could plow through this and get that sacred shard, that'd be another 500 points, that's huge. Maybe you're not like me and you haven't been doing your referrals, um, this one, maybe I'll push for the 500. I'm, I'm gonna try. Uh, I just, uh, I'm borrowing this account from the person I, I lent it out to or gave it to. I'm gonna try to see if we can't get that 500 points, but it's gonna be really hard. But if you, it's actually really easy to get an account to level 30. So if you haven't done any referrals, that's 360 points right there if you can get all three void charts. Guys, I'm just trying to give you ideas because I think this might be the end for a lot of us. I think the summon rush might be a huge, huge paywall for us free to play players. And even low to moderate spenders. If you're only spending like, 20 to 50 bucks a month. To me, that's a high spender. But like, if you, even if you're spending 50 bucks a month, this still might be really, really hard if you're not like buying sacred charts from the shop, which I never recommend doing. Uh, unless you have, unless you're a spender, unless it's within your means, then go ahead, do whatever, do whatever makes you happy. I'll never stop you. Also, maybe look, maybe you could time it out. Oh, am I gonna finish my monthly quest? We're gonna be just off. If, 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 this was in with, if this was within nine days, we'd be fine. It's 11 days. You guys know I missed those two days, so. That's the problem. So I could have been perfectly online. But yeah, just trying to give you guys some ideas. Let's finish with some positives. You saw I grabbed that epic book. And funny enough, we have a lot of epic books coming to us because there's gonna be another epic book from here from my Tomorrow's Daily Log and Roar board. And I can't remember where, but there's some other epic book hiding out somewhere. Was it down here or something? I don't know. There was some other epic book somewhere, I promise. Maybe it was in one of the events or the tournaments. Uh, but that being said, we got the one more. We only needed one more. How great is that? Let's finish Skull Crown. Let's finish her off. And then normally I would say wait to ascend champions for a champ training tournament, not an event, because you get a few points. However, the points are pretty negligible. It's like maybe I think max 25 on an epic champion when you do six. So let's bring her out. Let's throw some potions on her. Let's do it. Big stats increase. Look at the base stats as I do this, guys. Look at that. Another 40, what is that? 44 attack. That This adds up, guys. That's huge. I'll even do the last one. Um, so I'll be out of void pots, um, but what I'll do is, I mean, the void keep, guys, be cognizant of that. The void keep is only gonna be open twice more during the Brogni fusion. So if you need to farm it, you have April 18th, two days from now, or when this video comes out, one day from now, um, April 18th and then April 25th, and then that's it, because the fusion will be over by the time whatever, April or May 2nd comes around. So those are your only two chances. So if you need pots to ascend Skimphos, you're gonna need six superior and 20 greater. Um, do not sleep on that, be on top of that. But look at that. Look at her base stats now, 1509 attack. So now she's gonna be hitting hard. Look at that, almost at 3K. It's not much, but with all that crit damage, we should see an immediate difference in the arena. What do you say? Let's go to the arena and wrap up. This is a long video today, guys, but I think this might be the most productive day in the history of the channel. Just kind of funny given how the my day, my raid day started with those crazy pulls. I will show you guys, I'm not gonna pretend. I've been having an absolutely rough go of it. The good defenses are out. I was up pretty high in silver. I was somewhere about here, like 1550 to 1570 range, 1540 to 1570 um, for a while. And I was getting hard matchups. I was trying. I didn't give it my perfect attention because I had the stream and all that stuff and all the video editing going on today. But this is pretty wacky. Like this is my biggest losing streak ever on this account. What, four, five, six losses in a row. I've been having a rough go of it. Not everything's peachy.
Right, let's hop in here. Let's see if we can't win this one. I think we have to run our speedy team. So no decreased defense. I've been trying a lot of different things trying to make it work. It's been tough out there. Let's just hope we're fast enough. We have a chance because our Apothecary is at rank 6, level 6 of Ascension. Unless you have your Hikatoon at level 6 of Ascension, she's only at 97 speed. So it's easier for us to build our Apothecary with one of 6 uh, once he's ranked up because he also gets more. Um, I think he goes from 99 to 106. So he's already really fast. If you didn't see the video yesterday, we got some new gear on him. So he's at 230. What was that? 236? Is that what that was? 233, excuse me. So pretty fast. If we go first, I think we have a good shot at this one. Let's just try it. We also have the better speed lead. Four percentage points higher. So we do go first, but look how close it was. Look at just a sliver on Hikatoon there. Let's speed this up. Let's give me some true fear. Oh, we missed on Kale. But if Skullcrown can get off, yeah, look at that. Let's see how hard she hits. Let's go to 1x. So this is going to be a tankier champion. Let's see what she can get. Almost 25k. That's a big improvement for her because she hits pretty soft. That was with no decreased defense as well. We did have increased attack. Um, let's see if we can't find one more. This could be a nice one. What I do with these teams, I like to get the... I've mentioned this many times, but I like to get the Gore Grab going first. So I like to go like this and see if that doesn't help. Let's try it out. They could, if they're perfectly speed tuned, we're just toast out of the get-go. Let's go back to 2x. So Gore Grab did go. Oh, they're perfectly speed tuned. Oh, tough. So what I'm gonna. So what I do in this case is I have to run it back. Let's see how big we can hit. But you saw how much harder her A1 was hitting now that we um, we booked out the A1. It's pretty pretty huge. So let's, let's run that back. Let's run that back. Just like this. And yeah, this, so you get an extra 20% damage when you book out the A1. It doesn't sound like much, but it's pretty cool. Because she's countering all the time. That adds up every 20% every time she counters is a big deal. So cool, they still were faster. Give me some real fear. Cool, we poofed Kale. Now this should be an easy peasy fight. Let's smack him. Yeah. All right, let's see how hard this hits for him. 16. So tank your champion. That was hard. Is there one more win here? And then we'll wrap it up. One more win for us. I, I I could maybe try this one. Let's try this one. Let's go like this. Mm, this is hard to think. No, let's go. Let's go like this. No, take a pot carry out. We're gonna need. This is gonna be a very decrease. Uh, uh, this is gonna be a very defensive team with very high defense. So decrease defense is gonna be huge. It's kind of our only chance. We very well. I'd only give us like a 40, 50 percent chance of winning this. Broadmaw, cool reviver champ, underrated in the arena. He has a humongous aura. Seeker's aura in the arena is amazing. That's only 30 percent. This is 33 percent. That's huge. So we really need the decrease defense, and we gotta hope we just all get in without a hitch. Maybe Yoshi gets some true fear out because I can't imagine all of our guys are faster than them. However, Yoshi is. Come on. I've got three of them. Let's hope we get a couple poofs. There we go. Come on, big hitter. Not too many weak hits. Let's see how many weak hits we get. I don't think we got any weak hits. But the bombs are out. That's not good. We need a big hit out of Skullcrown. I'd love to see Broadma drop. Oh, just hung out. And then he gets the res. That's really unfortunate. That's basically a guaranteed loss. The bombs are out. We needed a cleanse. Um, I think we can ignore Broadma because with the double HP burn, he should just drop. Sorry, it's still on 1x. I think we're toast, though. Um, okay, let's go for, I guess let's go for Doom Priest, because I think Broadmaw's dead. Well, now he's for sure dead. I mean, if this has, these bombs have a lot of attack, it doesn't look like they did based on the way that just hit Yoshi. We still might have a chance. Give us a big hit here. All right, how hard is Zavia going to hit us? Oh, she's going to smack. This is tough. Yeah, this was really tough. Yeah. Kind of want to run that one back. That was pretty unfortunate. Should we run it back? One more. And then, then I'm calling it a day. This is going to be a long video, guys. This is going to be a long video. Let's see how long we've been running for it. Oh, maybe I'll keep it under 30. We'll see. Probably going to be over 30. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Come on. We need more poofs. It's tough going at Soul Drinker. If a team builds them right like it seems like this one did, um, it can be tough. Let's see. Uh, we need some crits. Cool. It's actually kind of nice that Soul Drinker held on. We just gotta hope we knock down Broadmaw. And if he hangs on by an inch again, oh, he, are you serious? Oh, at least Doom Priest died, so we actually have a chance. Give me that HP burn. Let's take it back on 2x. Oh, let's kill Broadmaw. Are you joking? All right, so hopefully he only gets one shot landing on him, and then these split. I'd love for Zavi to drop with a crit. Oh, right, the block damage is up. That's tragic. The good news is we ha they haven't procced Skull Crowns. Let's see if we can get a stun. They haven't procced Skull Crowns unkillable yet. So she can't really die. Yeah, oh, this this stinks, man. 
It's been tough in the arena. There you go. Moral of the story. It's been really tough in the arena. It's been a tough go of it. Um, the, the arena tournament's heating up. We will finish it, but it's not going to be a walk in the park like the last few have been. 455 is a hard total to hit. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know. If you're worried about the summon rush, if you want to hit me up in Discord, I can give you my opinion if I think you can actually do it. I'll tell you guys, if you think my account's in a good spot, it's really, really not. I mean, you can kind of tell by looking at it. Um, it's not in a terrible spot. Maybe this looks more dire. I don't know how this looks to you guys. But if you're not at least this far along and you don't have some energy gems to boot or something, you might be in a really, really sticky situation if it's going to be the 3,000 3, points, I think it is. So guys, let me know in the comments if you're worried, how you're feeling. If you're just cruising, also let me know. Big shouts to you. Congrats. Um, I've been fastidious. You know, it's free to play. It's free to click. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Fast Didius.